mean, I, I was lucky enough to um, have gotten on one of the first commercial tours of China after Carter normalized relations with, with Beijing uh, in the late 70s. And, uh, you know, I had about six months to prepare, and I was thinking, you know, we all felt like Marco Polo back then. I mean, now it's commonplace, but that was a big deal then. So I just thought, how do I prepare? And I started, started uh, taking Chinese lessons, and I just absolutely fell in love with, with Chinese, then with China when I made the trip, and pretty much my, uh, my career path was forged. As soon as I graduated from college, I went out to Hong Kong, worked for a magazine there, and uh, within a few years was the Wall Street Journal's bureau chief in Beijing. So uh, that was really my passion in those years. Yeah, the Zhao Memoir Project, it's interesting, it was, it was a tightly held secret among just a very, very few of us for more than a year. And the person who brought me into it was uh, my co-editor and co-producer in the project, Bao Pu. Now, Bao Pu is a very interesting figure. He's the son of a very important person in, in kind of modern Chinese politics, Bao Tong. Bao Tong was Zhao Ziyang's um, primary aide. And after, after the Tiananmen crackdown, after the killings, June 4th, 1989, um, Zhao, the Communist Party secretary, was put under house arrest, where he remained for the last 16 years of his life before he died in 2005. Uh, Bao Tong, his aide, actually was sent to, to, to prison prison and was under solitary confinement for, for many of the seven years that he was away. So his son, Bao Pu, is in Hong Kong. and He's a, he's a U.S. passport holder. But, but, uh, but Bao Pu became the person who was entrusted with making this project happen. You know, Zhao, um, before he died, secretly, under house arrest, secretly under the nose of his captors, recorded 30 hours of tape that was his, his secret journal about what really happened behind the scenes uh, during Tiananmen, you know, how the, how the Politburo really interacted with one another, how he tried to stop the crackdown and, and, and lost the argument and lost his job for it. So he recorded these 30 hours of tape. They were, he entrusted a few people to smuggle them out of the country. They eventually made it to Hong Kong, where, where Bao Pu was entrusted with kind of sort of getting it all together and making this project happen. He needed somebody like me. He needed a, a Western journalist who, who, who could help polish the, the language, who could write introductions that would create context for American readers in particular who don't know uh, all this Chinese history to write an introduction, to find a publisher. So, so he brought me into this about a year and a half ago. And uh, you know, we had to keep it secret because we had a fear that if the Chinese government knew about this, they would squeeze Zhao's children, most of whom are still in China and are doing business. They would squeeze them and just say, do whatever you can to stop this project. And that probably would have succeeded. So we really, somehow we managed to, to keep this a very tightly held secret until, really until publication.